Redditors who had their lives saved by someone that gave up those. What's the story? My cousin was driving his daughter to a new state for her new teaching job when his car was hit by a semi. The daughter was trapped in the car, which was on fire, but somehow her dad broke through a blocked door and dragged her out. Later in the hospital he was found to have a severed spine and main artery. He didn't make it. She's physically fine. I don't know if dragging her out made a difference as to whether he would have lived or not, but I know he would have done it either way and he definitely saved her life, so I feel like it counts. This sorta doesn't count, but I'll tell it anyway. I was born at 24 weeks and 3 days through emergency c-section, and weighed 1 pound half oz, and was 11 inches long. I stayed in the NECU for about 3 months. Around the time I was born, my dad's dad was in the hospital across the street dying of colon cancer. I was born in March. One night in April my dad got the phone call that his dad was dying. So he went up there. After my grandfather died, my dad told my mom he wanted to go see me. When they got there, my ventilator, machine helping me breathe, was gone. They were understandably freaked out and asked a nurse what happened. Apparently I pulled the tube out. The tube that was taped to my throat. After the third time of me pulling it out, the doctors left it out to see what would happen and I started breathing on my own. My dad said around what time did this happen? And the time the nurse said was the exact moment that my grandfather died. So my family has always said that when my grandfather was taking his last breath, I was taking my first breath on my own. Not quite sure if this counts, but almost 7 years ago I was into some hard shit and my best friend did it with me. Not sure why, he was sick with a couple different long term illnesses, so we both know it wasn't good for him. Hell it's not good in general, don't do drugs kids, but I was a stupid kid and we did everything together. One night my life kinda imploded on itself, and we doped up more than we ever had before. I was about to do another round, when he tried talking me down. I made some excuse about not wanting my shit to go to waste, which was bullshit I cold saved it for later. So he offered to use it up, so that it wouldn't go to waste. If I had taken that I'd have likely died of an overdose. He actually did. Found out when I woke up. I've been sober ever since. He tried so hard to save me for so many years, I hope he knows that he really did. Not to me, but a family friend. There were two adults, barely, like 18 and 19, and three kids in the back ages 2, 6, and 7. They were driving back from the store to a family gathering, and a drunk driver hit them, I don't know how, but the guy and co-pilot jumped back, and protected the kids from the impact, he passed away, but the three kids were fine, the driver died too, the drunk guy fled. So when cops came to scene they found the little kids on the dead guy's arms. Not me, but a friend of a friend I had many years back. I'll call the kid Zeke. Zeke and a buddy were by our old intermediate school and hanging out by a drainage pond in the surrounding wetlands. No idea what it's for or what it's used for but basically it's a super strong whirlpool that will take you under without a second thought. Zeke, from what I recall, forgive me, this was 12 to 13 years ago, was dared to jump in the whirlpool. He did and he basically got taken under immediately. Zeke bobbing above and under the water started screaming for help. Two men, teachers who were father and son, who frequently walked their dogs around the school premises noticed this and rushed to save this kid's life. They both jumped in and got Zeke back to land. Unfortunately both of them that day were taken by this aggressive water and died. I'm not so sure how Zeke took it, I was never real close to him in school and the relationship we did have was pretty much pass and repass. From what I observed though, it would suggest he took it pretty hard and never totally got over it. Of course anyone would understand why. Well, it was back in 1996. I was walking across a railroad track when all of a sudden I was struck from behind by a wheelchair. As I turned around a via rail train instantly blew away the 74 year old lady that just saved my life. I was so grateful, I helped retrieve her corpse from the oak tree 60 yards down the track. I have two. They aren't me, if that's alright. Seeing a lot of others in this technically not me category, so I'm going for it, but they both stuck to me pretty hard. My uncle died trying to protect a couple who was being robbed in a restaurant. Some gangbangers came in 
and started to harass the people in the restaurant and guns were pulled. My uncle knew one of the guys since high school and figured he could talk him down from hurting anyone else. No one else got hurt except him. Never got to know him, but heard he was an exceptionally cool dude. My teacher in kindergarten was diagnosed with cancer at a point it was aggressively treatable, but also found out she was pregnant. She needed to get an abortion before she could start any cancer treatments, but she didn't want to have the abortion. The cancer was terminal by the time the baby arrived, and she left behind her husband and three children. What hit me especially hard with my teacher is that my family remembered her becoming more easily agitated and stressed at the end of the school year, and we found out after her death from her teacher's aide from that year that it was around the time she was diagnosed with the cancer and choosing to have a baby over her own life. My mom got into several arguments with her for being too insensitive and mean to her students towards the end of the school year. Teacher never told her or anyone about her condition. I was up at a friend's place and they went to a large funeral of someone I didn't know and this is the story. Three or four daughters were swimming and got swept out by the tide. One by one the father rescued them. He managed to rescue all of them, but drowned saving his last child. The worst part of the story is that one of them had their birthday that day. Not me but my great grandfather who lived in Ireland it was around a type of war, I'm not sure, and soldiers patrolled after curfew, and would shoot whoever was out no questions asked. Mitchell, my GGD, was out after curfew with his brother Christian they had been seen and were being chased, and Mitchell slipped, and Christian grabbed his brother, and then they both climbed up, but Christian got shot in the leg, and ended up deliberately stopping and trying to buy time, and get in a question or something, and Mitchell watched them shoot him, they were young so this was traumatizing, he managed to escape and even fought in Wii. he died 7 or 8 years ago he would have turned 101 this year, fun fact, he was born the same year as World War 1 ended, Hey, sorry if the wording is weird. English isn't exactly my sting suit. Also there's probably a few typos. I'm not sure if this counts, but my mom would talk about when she grew up on the Navajo reservation. One story has always been clear in my mind, because I've visited where this happened. So one day there was a school dance, and she was running a bit late, but that was okay, because the school was like right behind he house, and between her hour and her neighbors there was an alleyway with a gate. Well turned out it wasn't okay at all, because when she was going through the alleyway there was a guy up against the wall and fence. Since this is a reservation my mom just thought okay it's probably someone who's drunk or something like that. Well the thought stopped when she noticed that his gaze was on her and wasn't moving off her at all. After the eyes my mom noticed something reflect the moonlight, then she noticed what this guy was holding. It was a knife. My mom walked past him with no real trouble. But once she passed the gate she sprinted to the school. My grandfather was the principal there and was overlooking the entrance to greet all the students. Obviously my mom told him everything. My grandfather called the police but they found nothing. So the night went on until the end of the dance. While people were leaving this kid went up to buy grandpa and he just seemed basically completely waste and was grabbing his stomach. This kid has also had the reputation of being a troublemaker. Grandfather approached this kid getting ready to bring hell until the kid fell into him. The kid removed his hand from his stomach to reveal that his forearm and the stomach area of his shirt was drenched in blood. He was sent to the hospital, but didn't make it. My mom said with full certainty that without him, she probably would have been the one stabbed. Late reply but, when I was 15 my friends and I ran away to California. We literally just stayed with whoever would welcome us into their home people we met on the streets. Some people were nice, but of course your luck eventually runs out, and you run into the not so nice people. Long story short, my friends and I got separated, and I ended up in a motel with a pimp and this prostitute. He wanted to sell me into a sex trafficking ring, and told this other lady his plans. At some point, he left the motel room, and left his car keys in it. She told me we needed to leave, and she stole his car. She took me to a friend's house, and he showed up banging on the door. We waited for him to leave, and she dropped me off at the BART station and I never saw her again. I pressed rape charges against the pimp, and she was supposed to testify, but she was killed. Doesn't really take much to put two and two together. 
I'm 23 years old now and this doesn't even feel like a memory to me anymore. It feels like a story I saw on the news, but I think about the woman occasionally. I'm studying to be a trauma therapist and want to specialize in sex trauma. So hopefully something good will come out of all of this. This doesn't really count I guess, but here goes. I was around 3 or 4 and my neighbor, 4 years older than me, and I were playing with these plastic guns that had big plastic balls as bullets. We ended up getting one of the balls stuck on top of the closet, so we both climbed the shelves to get it back. The closet ended up tilting and falling on us. My neighbor put her knee up which prevented the closet from squashing my head. She messed up her knee pretty badly, but thanks to that I only got hit near my left eye and had to get stitches. I had this friend. He was called Caesar. I knew him for a good while. Our grandfathers were friends. Caesar and I trained together, traveled around a lot. We were like brothers. He died a proud death, grabbing a ring to cure the poison I had been given. He was a brave man. In his last moments, he was brimming with light as he had spoken on to me Jojo this is the last of my Hanan. As I'm typing this, I can think of no greater sacrifice than that of Caesar's. May you rest in peace brother. I had two friends till year 5 who were my only friends at the time. We were walking down the street, in India, to get to the shops when two people showed up and tried to grab me. They both pushed me back, and they were stabbed. I don't really remember much, but my parents have recently revealed that I was also stabbed, my brain shut down for a bit, and lost quite a bit of my memory from before I was 10, but they both died in hospital. Not me, but my grandmother. She was in a concentration camp in Wei with her family, and the day before her and her bunks were to be gassed, a soldier from the Latvian version of the SS allowed the group to escape in the night. When my dad tried to find info about the soldier when doing his genealogy research, he found out that the soldier was shot for that. Not sure it counts, but I'm only alive because a coworker of my mom lost her kid due to sudden infant death. So then my mom insisted on having me tested for everything, and the doctor said it wasn't needed, because I was carried to full term and there was little risk. Well, until after the tests, I turned out to stop breathing in my sleep quite a lot. I've had to sleep on a special monitor for a while, which made an alarm go off whenever I stopped breathing. So the alarm woke me up, I started crying, for which you need to breathe. And all due to that one baby who died shortly before I was born. I was contemplating suicide. But one morning I was the one who discovered my flatmate's dead body. She didn't leave a note. The sight of her lifeless corpse scarred me so much that I'm still dealing with PTSD to this day. I still blame myself. I've promised never to off myself after seeing how badly her death has hurt so many people. So in a way, I suppose my life has been saved. A friend of mine and I went to restore warp power in the engine room which was flooded with radiation. I got trapped, and my pointy-eared buddy repaired the warp drive and our ship escaped the explosion, which formed a new planet. He didn't make it though, and his last words were that we'd always be good mates. I know a 70 year whose father died in Rhodesia when he was 14 basically the father went back to the flood to save the mother, but didn't realize the mother was safe in a dry area, and he died for nothing. Swordman also claims to have dinned with the queen and tbh I believe him, he's had quite the life. I have an old coach whose wife grew up in Vietnam. She once told me a story about a time she was playing soccer with some friends from her village around the age of 10. The ball got kicked out of bounds into some brush on the edge of the field that they were playing in. As her and one of her friends raced to the ball, her friend was faster and reached the ball first. As she came to a halt in front of the ball she stepped on an old landmine completely vanishing out from in front of my coach's wife. My grandpa once told me that his friend saved him by almost killing him. In Vietnam his six-man squad was to do reckon on a town, because there was a lot of suspicion and the edge had a cliff with water down he said it was almost 50 feet. They went out, and my grandpa and his friend were walking down the cliff talking and smoking, when his friend grabbed my grandad's vest, and said napalm this town like a grill, and pushed him off as a rem 79 grenade launcher my grandad got impaled in his leg on a spike trap, and got to his evoc. He told them what happened, and they had a funeral for him. I almost got knifed in the Dominican Republic by these two kids in this tiny town, 
Bay Hybe. They saw me walking around at night and came to my hotel with knives. I was out on the balcony in front of my room and they come up to me not saying a word, but brandishing large enough knives. So I put my hands up, and real cool like reached in my pocket, and handed them like $200 local currency and they ran off. The kicker is, my wife was in an unlocked room right there with like maybe $2,500 and all of our shit. And I made enough noise about it talking calmly, but loudly enough, that I heard the door lock. Thank god. My first thought was, okay they want money. My second was, what if they get in that room with my wife? That second question still fucks with me. Anyways, so this town is small, and I walked over to the police station, and explained what happened, and the cops are like, oh yeah we probably know who it is. Come back tomorrow morning at 9, and we'll have you identify them. Came back at 9, and they had both of them in custody. Never did get my money back, but whatever. I'm not entirely sure how close I was to being murdered. This took place back when I worked the register at McDonald's. It was around 10, we weren't 24 hour, and would be closing up soon, and in walks a guy that's drunk off his ass. He comes up to the counter and starts chatting with me about nothing in particular, mostly nonces I can't remember, but I started to get the impression he wasn't just drunk. I'm doing my best to just humor him, waiting for him to leave when out of nowhere he says, if I was gonna kill everyone in here, I'd kill you first, because you look like you'd know what to do. A bit of morbid a morbid joke I thought and set up, thanks. At this point he pulled out a gun from his waistband and pointed it at me. It wasn't like a full on point more, like he was limply holding the gun in my general direction. I didn't know what to do and only hoped to god he was still joking. He then said bang, and tucked the gun back into his wasterband. I think that he just wanted to let me know, that he could kill me, if he wanted to. He left shortly after that. I informed my manager and was later told, that man was both a regular and long time friend of my manger, who tried to downplay what had happened. I left that job shortly after for school.